All right. Uh, good afternoon to those of you on the East Coast. Good afternoon also to those of you on the West Coast. I'm your host, Brandon Choi, also co-creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. Thank you guys so much for joining us this afternoon on a Sunday. Um, as you well know, we have a terrific show on tap for you guys. I know recently we have, you know, last few weeks have been doing, you know, some, some, uh, uh, walks down memory lane, if you will, of uh, anniversaries of, of films that, you know, are near and dear to me that are, you know, I know near and dear to many of those of you out there. Um, if you had a chance to take a look at the promo, you'll know that we are doing a 30th anniversary uh, show of uh, none other than the Shawshank Redemption. Of course, based on the 1982 novella, uh, Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption, the film known as The Shawshank Redemption was released in theaters in limited release in September of 1994, then received a wider release in October that same year. Um, of course, it was nominated for you know seven Oscars. It was the first Stephen King you know adapted uh, a film to get nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. Uh, and with that out of the way, I want to be able to introduce each of our said guests. Uh, the first guest uh, that I want to bring on, they have had an expansive career spanning the stage as well as the big screen and small screen in films such as in television shows, you know, um, whether it's projects such as Aliens, Rush Hour, Young Justice, Robocop 2, Eraser. And if that weren't enough, he also has carved a career for himself in video games such as uh, Dragon Age Origins. Uh, Spider-Man, Injustice, Gods Among Us, among many more. It is my pleasure to welcome onto the show Mark Rolston. Let me bring him on now. Hello, Mark. Hey. How's it going, man? What's up? What's up? All, All right. right. Doing great. So our next guest also needs no introduction as uh, they have carved a career spanning, as I have right you know, stated many times, spanning half a century. Um, <laughs> Not just on the stage, uh, not just on the small screen, but also on the big screen. Of course, in Die Hard 2, uh, in Tales from the Crypt, in the television series, as well as in the film series, in the Bill and Ted film series, in The Miss, and much, much more. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show, Bill Sadler. Bill, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Brandon. Great All to right. be here. Outstanding. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So... Uh, welcome, gentlemen, to this 30th, gosh, 30th anniversary of uh, Shawshank Redemption. Um, I guess I'll start first. And, and just right off the bat, we already have someone. Hello, Mark. Hello. Hi, hey. hi, hi. Hi, Rachel. Hey. Um, so uh, just to hop, dig, you know, dive right in, I'll start first of just, you know, briefly talking about how uh, your respective involvement started with you know, Shawshank Redemption of, of thinking back at that time and, and coming across this script or, or even possibly, you know, auditioning for the film. Whoever would like to go first. Well, it, Mark. Uh, I'll jump in. Yeah, just, yeah. Um, you know, in, in both our careers, I'm sure Bill will agree. It's like, you know, if you remember on one hand the number of scripts that, you know, you dive into and then suddenly you are completely enveloped by it and sucked into the world and you know it's one of the greatest scripts you've ever read and that was Shawshank I mean um it's one of five in my career that I can honestly say the first time I read it, it was like oh my god I would die to be in this movie it was just so beautifully written and uh had a pace to it and just to feel that uh I would I would have died to be in it for me personally you know you went through the ordinary audition process but uh, I learned after filming the, uh, Shawshank that uh, Frank had really uh, uh, fought for me because initially uh, Rob Reiner didn't want me. So he forced Frank to go to New York City to audition a load of people. And it had been months and months, like three and a half months. I thought I had lost it. And one morning, uh, um, Frank caught me when I was going out on a morning run and uh to tell me that i got the part <laughs> and and he, and i said what took you so long and he told me the tale that he you know had to go to new york and that he never divulged names but he said that mark you beat out a lot of you know big name people but yeah. frank also was a true angel 
he uh, when they were showing the last five choices of our supporting roles in a theater in Castle Rock, Frank slipped my audition disc in to, to, to be played after the original five that the producers had chosen. And he got the projections to slip my disc in. Wow. And then apparently after my disc showed, he turned to Reiner and said, and if that's not the guy for the role, you're stupid. <laughs> and, and, and Reiner was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that's so like... that's so, so it's it, my story is thanks to Frank Darabont for being a true angel and I'll thank him for eternity. It was a wow. turning point in my career. That's it. Well, 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 let me ask this. Uh, is there any truth to the fact? Because I know, you know, Darabon is like no stranger to the world of horror, you know, prior to doing Shawshank Redemption, you know, writing scripts for, you know, uh, horror films prior to that time. You know, is there any truth to the fact that like he immediately like pictured you as like he had made like a, a gesture of identifying you from aliens immediately or was it Absolutely, that, like, yeah I, it, it was it was the funniest thing i'm there for my audition sitting in the hallway bill you could probably picture it you know at deb's office was here and there was a hallway down and yeah, at the end good. of the hallway um this guy kept walking into the hallway and looking down at me and then passing through and then went back the other way and looked at me and i was like who is this person like just oh, like, keeps like staring, staring at me <laughs> and it wasn't until I walked into the room and Darabont exclaimed, he went, you're Drake. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I actually gifted Frank my only aliens remaining, a framed one sheet of aliens because he was such a big fan. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Holy smoly. Oh, my gosh. Bill, top that. Go ahead and top that. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. I don't like think that. I'm not Right. I'm not sure. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. I had done. I did the. I did the very first episode of Tales from the Crypt. Right. Yes. Uh, for Joel Silver, um, and it was, it was Walter Hill directed it, and it was all monologues right into the lens, and, um, Frank was one of the writers on Tales from the Crypt. I came. I came back to the set after my our show had aired. And uh, the and he said he came up to me on the set and said, "I wrote this script and I want you to be in it. Um, it's called Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption." And I and I thought, I mean, it was like every cab driver in L.A. has got a script. Hey, everybody won. Everybody has written something, and they, you know, and it's they're usually, you know, there's. They're not all great. <laughs> he said, I'm going to send you something. So he sent me, he, and I think I still have it, the anthology of Stephen King's um, Another Season. And in it is the novella. He didn't send me the script. I don't think he'd written it yet. Hmm. Um, but he sent me the novella of Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption, and I read it. And... Um, there was, and I think there was a note that said, "Look at the role of role of red." Um, but um, when I find, when I got then when they got around to doing auditions, he called me in again, uh, and I sat and I sat there listening to one actor after another go go in, as you well know, Mark, and you hear, "Oh, what's this?" What's his name? Played fat ass. Um, Frank Adrano. Frank. Uh, and Frank was, poor Frank had to, uh, you know, reach down into his, his gut and pull up this, you know, emotional thing that he had to do um, again and again and again. And, uh, and I went in and I read for, uh, um, they wanted to see me for Haywood, and uh, so I read for it, and they and I got the role. So it wasn't as dramatic as uh, as Mark's story. Um, I don't, I don't think, but I wasn't uh, privy to the behind the scenes. Um, I know Frank 
butted heads with Castle Rock, with Rob Reiner uh, on several things, on many things. Um, I remember a cast and crew screening where I heard Rob Reiner in the hallway somewhere screaming at the top of his lungs saying, you know, you are going to cut it. You are going to cut it. What the fuck? And just like blew, just lost his shit, just lost it. And <laughs> the two of them, the two of them just, but, you know, butted heads. Um, and fortunately, you know, fortunately for us and the world, Frank held on to this thing with both hands and got it. You know, he got the people together that he wanted. I think, I think they deliberately leaned toward theater actors, which is interesting in Hollywood, uh, where they don't generally regard theater very highly. Um, and, you know, they want to see you real. They want to, what's the last film you did? Um, but they wanted an ensemble. And they wanted people that could work together and feel like they'd been together for 19 years or whatever the, you know, the span of this sentence. You know, we're all lifers in this movie. Um, and that's what they, I think they insisted on it. And I think that's what they got. I know Tom Cruise was considered at one point. <laughs> and I was going to say, I'm, I'm glad you guys brought that up because like there are so many, you know, uh, uh, you know, trivia elements of this film of, and it, and it just makes me just think of just in films in general, how things that are meant to be are just meant to be like people that are supposed to be an ensemble together are just meant to be because I'm going to go down the list, guys, like of some of the folks that, you know, could have been your potential co-stars. And I don't know if, if maybe they were at the point when you guys got involved and maybe it changed over the course. But like, give you an example, like Sidney, Sidney Poitier, I understand, was going to be was up for Red Norton. Uh, I should say for uh, Norton, you had William H. Macy, Dennis Hopper, James Cromwell, uh, Brooks. You had uh, Jack Lemon. Uh, Walter Matthau, like you had some incredible folks. And I mean, don't get me wrong, like I, the, all of them are like incredible, wow. iconic talents. And like, yeah. for whatever reason, one reason or another, they didn't end up being the people that ended up being cast who I can't see anybody else other than the people that got cast being in that part. So that's the, that's the thing. If, if you, I mean, if they'd cast Tom Cruise, it would have been a I mean, there's no way to get around. It would have just been very a different, different movie. movie. A different movie. There were, you know, like this, and I think they realized that. That's that was one of the reasons that they wanted this well, ensemble. They, if, if, this if ensemble Tom Cruise had had to play, it he would never. Andy would have never been a tall drink of water. He would have been a short cup of water. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But also to follow on to what Bill was saying about the theater, you know, the one of the sort of hallmarks in my uh, recollection of to why Shawshank was successful, not only uh, Frank and the writing and Deb Aquila casting, but uh, we had a producer, Nikki Marvin, who came from the theater in London and she really valued it. But she also insisted that we rehearse. And I'm telling you, I've only had three movies that, I, where I rehearsed and they all benefited from it. And we did almost three weeks. Do you remember that, Bill? Yep. 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 I, I've done one movie where we rehearsed and that was Shawshank. And there you go. And the, the, the whole point of that three weeks was to develop those little threads, the little, the byplay and the back and forth and the um, get, to, to build that ensemble so that on day one, that we also, they also taped off the floor and practiced camera moves and so on. It was not a, it, it wasn't just the actors. It was like, how are we gonna, how do you wanna play? How do you wanna film this? How do you wanna move the camera? And when, when you know, when we got to the set, so, so many things had been decided and been, you know, put in play. Um, I've never, I've never done a movie that rehearsed. 
like that, um, except Shawshank. We also shot it in sequence, which is which I've never done. <laughs> I don't recommend it as a. It's not. It, it's not an inexpensive way to shoot anything, but. I think they were worried that to get all of these people's age makeup right year after decade after decade, you know, for 19 years to go to jump back and forth would be too difficult. So they didn't, we did, we, we shot it in, we pretty much shot it in sequence. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's wild. Which, yeah which sort of helped everybody. I mean, it, it made our lives a little bit easier. You know, we knew, we knew exactly where we were in the story. Um, well, does, does, oh, go ahead. I was going to yeah, say, no. to, to speak further on that, I wanted to be, a, be able to do a deep dive on, you know, each of your respective characters, if, if you will, uh, uh, if you don't mind, and going into Boggs and, and Haywood, you know, can you talk, Talk a bit about like these, you know, significantly different inmates and, you know, how they operate and, and getting into the minds of those characters. Like, I mean, just to start, Mark, of, of someone who is so, you know, in doing a character that's such a 180, or maybe it's not a 180, I'm just kidding, uh, such a 180 from, from uh, you know, who you are, you know, as a person and, and trying to bring uh, uh, realism, you know, to that and authenticity to that, you know, uh, can, can you talk a bit about, you know, getting into that process of, of trying to imbue life to someone who is, can be so different from who you are? Well, I mean, ultimately uh, for all actors, I think it's, it's a matter of, uh, putting yourself into this world, right? believing yourself into this, into the character. Um, I had to work out like a psychology for, you know, why Boggs did what he did. And uh, because it really was like the sisters, like we were a, a, a gang of sorts. And, you know, uh, this was our occupation. I mean, this is what we did for, you know, cause you know, if you ever spend any time in prison, like it, it's, it's worse than watching paint dry, right? So the role of Boggs is really more about uh, someone who had a, a personality disorder about power. Um, I had a real run in with Tim Robbins because Tim thought it was about homosexuality, which it isn't. And um, it was just a matter of, 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 of going there. And ultimately, you know, the ultimate power man to man is like either somebody you can subdue, somebody you can bend to your will, right? Um, and that's really the essence of, of Boggs. It was, you know, he was pretty psychotic, but uh, really I, I almost thought of it as a way that uh, he did this as a way of filling time. And it wasn't so much, so much the, uh, gratification of some sort of sexual act it really was the gratification in uh, uh subduing and manipulating and wielding my power over somebody who portrayed like andy who was you know obviously more intelligent than boggs um you know we probably all heard around the yard that oh yeah that's that's the banker killer he was a banker so you know in prison oftentimes uh you know once guys get to know your your history they'll use those moments to exploit it and that's what boggs is about and brilliantly gotcha bill <laughs> no i was uh, i thought uh I thought Boggs was uh, a, just a genius portrayal. He slid so easily into that, into that world. And I never doubted for a second that it was about power. It was about, I'm going to take this guy down a peg, you know, I'll show him who, we'll show him who's boss around here. Um, which is why I think it's so satisfying when Boggs finally gets his uh, 
come up and yeah <laughs> and gets taken away in a wheelchair and it's never going to eat solid food again um haywood um haywood for me was um i assume i always i always sort of felt like i had this i had this dial and i can dial a character's uh iq up or down and if you're playing an you know an arch villain in something you you dial it way up um because you know you're playing three-dimensional chess and you know everything that's going on with haywood i dialed it way way down he didn't seem to me to be the brightest uh, bulb in the sign and it just and the and the the further down i dialed it the funnier he got he becomes like a it becomes like a puppy or something you can't it's like the only thing that exists is what's right in front of right directly in front of him you know he doesn't think <laughs> he's he, <laughs> he doesn't think any any further than what's right there and 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 so he's constantly surprised by things like he finds the horse ball out in the field and thinks it's a you know a rock or something or um they're gonna make uh um <laughs> they're gonna we we're gonna get something special for Andy. We're gonna get some rocks, and it's like it takes him by surprise because um, because everything takes him by surprise. When he wins the bet that gets Fat Ass killed uh, in the beginning, I added I didn't want him to be he he could be one dimensionally a prick, um, you know. He could be part of this world that's just uh, to hell with to hell with everybody. I'm I'm out for myself, you know. Um, and you could you could play it that way. He's almost written that way, you know. Um, what happened to that? I uh, did you know that? What happened to that guy? that was taken to the infirmary. I think you owe him a big fat sloppy kiss. He's dead. And I think what I, the, the sort of decision that I made was that he didn't, I didn't mean to get the guy killed. I meant to win the cigarettes. It, that's the objective. We do this to all the inmates, fresh fish, fresh fish. And and bet on who's going to crack, but they just crack. They don't. And then when he's, and then when Hay, Hadley's walking down the aisle and he's taking his club out and it's like, don't you shut up. You know, and I sort of added that element, like shut up, shut, shut up. And they drag him out of, but he doesn't. And they drag him out of the cell and they beat him to death. And then when Andy says, what was his name? And I said, what do you care? He's dead. Um, he's defensive, you know, because I got him killed. And fuck you. And I don't, I didn't, I didn't want him to simply be, you know, this, uh, you know, dark, this dark human. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mike, I tell you that Billy, one of you, one of your lines has stayed with me all these years. That I, Whenever I see a copy of, say, Alexandra Dumas novels, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's one of the funniest lines of the movie. <laughs> well, that's it. Well, but that's that. That's that thing. He's like, it's the Alexander Donat. <laughs> like he's su he's surprised that it's dumbass and <laughs> and t it tickles him so it's and but that's what but that's what i meant about you know i don't think he's the you know he, he's just not he's just he's just not the brightest bulb in the sun yeah
but yeah. but I it was all of our ways of pa- passing time. You know, it it, it, it it's to, it's to this day. I mean, guys are just passing time, and if you're really bright. You'll be like Andy, and you'll plot your intricate escape. But if you're or, or fuck ups you. like you know, like Haywood and Boggs, you're you, you don't think outside of the walls. You're just you're right. You're you you you're just gonna make what's working, like you say, right in front of your face, right here. I'll con like for Boggs. I'll control this part of my world, and right. even Boggs' line, you know, where he he. Uh, Hadley comes to get me out of the, uh, you know, solitary. Yeah. And Boggs, Boggs knows it, it's your world, boss. You tell me where to fucking go and I'll that, go. That line, that line kills me every single time I hear it's your world, boss. Yeah. You just Great like, line. Uh, I say it to my wife all the time. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Cool. Of course you do. Well, let's say with that being said, guys, um, you know, just to uh, uh, dive further into that, you know, there, there's, I feel like there's such a school of thought when it comes to acting of, of, I guess, you know, going completely method and, and, you know, trying to do, you know, some semblance of that, of still trying to find something in the character versus, you know, going strictly method with the character. Because I know some, uh, uh, very often, like that could go sideways very fast. Um, but, for for you all, um, you know, was there some semblance of either of those those components in, in what you were explaining? Because the only reason why it comes to mind is in thinking of uh, um, the character uh, Haywood and and thinking of that moment where you know he's at knife uh, at knife point. Um, I know in that in that scene and um, that there was a component bill where you had you know, suggested for, because I guess the knife was very dull that you suggested for, you know, for your co-star to be able to, to be rougher with you in using that said knife. I just, and they were kind of scared to do that. Well, part, of that part of that was working out. It's just two actors working out a, a bit. It's a, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a moment. And James Whitmore, bless him, Yes, the great James Whitmore. Yes, the great, the great, in, incredibly g- genius James Whitmore he was terrified that he would hurt me. He was he was very frightened. Do, which, <laughs> which is, um, didn't wasn't didn't make the scene easier. But he puts he he wouldn't touch my, he wouldn't bring the knife anywhere near my neck. And they wanted to put a little blood, you know, like like he had nicked me, um, right? And we were and, and we were struggling, and he's holding me for the whole scene, um, until Andy talks him out of it, and and so I, I didn't really want him. I didn't want him to use a sharp knife. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, but, sure, sure. But, I, but I but I felt safe with. I mean, I. The knife was, was really dull, was really, really dull. And I wanted him to lay it, just, you know, just lay it there and I'll do the rest. Um, you don't have to worry about cutting me. Um, that was, just, you know, you work out, you work out the dances. And, um, but I remember when we start when we started filming that scene, he was, um, Maybe I was over anxious, uh, being a young buck. Um, he didn't want me to jerk forward or something, and he accidentally pierces my larynx. Um, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sure that's what he was thinking, but 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 he's the gentlest human alive, and he has to do this. He had, you know, he has to do this t- uh, threatening thing. So we, you know, we we compromised. We worked it out. I'll ho- I'll hold your arm and you lay, you know, lay the flat of it against my neck and whatever. I miss him. I re- I remember. I remember sitting around listening to him tell stories. Um, 
well, there was a lot of time, downtime on the set. And I would listen to, listen to James Whitmore tell stories. Um, that was a, it was an extraordinary little moment that summer, that, that thing that we, that we all sort of lived through. Um, I watched, I watched uh, um, Morgan Freeman sit there like a Buddha between scenes, conserving his energy because the days were going to be long. And I didn't know that. And the rest of us are like running or we're like young idiots running around playing baseball and joke, you know, slap assing and um, burning up all this, <laughs> burning up all of this extra energy. And, uh, and Morgan went and Morgan and James would just, they would just sit there and, and wait for their moment. And when their moment came, it was all there. It was just all there. And I learned that, I learned that lesson that summer. Um, Yeah. yeah, my lesson, my, my lesson was sitting and talking to Morgan one day and just he had so many great tales, but uh, he told me, you know, his secret to his approach to film acting was to just talk, just talk. And I don't know if you remember this, Bill, but <laughs> Morgan called out Tim in the yard when they were doing the rock scene. Yeah. And do you remember this? And Morgan Morgan stopped him, stopped a take and said, Tim, Tim, cut cut out the movie star shit. Just just talk to me. And the whole crew was like, you know, <laughs> couldn't believe that he had called them out in front of everyone. But uh yeah, that 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 was a little lesson that I've taken on through the rest of my career. It's just <laughs> when 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 you find that you're just talking the role, you know yeah. you're in the right spot. Wow. It was it was effortless. He made it he made it effortless and and it's funny you watch the scenes with like in the library when they're passing on either side of the bookcase and tim has all of this you know he has stacks and stacks of monologue uh, about um what the warden has him doing and uh you could, I don't, I, I just admired Morgan. I just, you could, there was just an effortlessness. You could, I, I couldn't see the gears turning. And sometimes I could see the gears turning with Tim. He was working his way through these, you know, this story. And, uh, but I never saw the gears turning with Morgan. Yeah. It was, uh, it was beautiful. It was very uh, enlightening. Well, I was going to say, I feel like that's a great segue. Just in, just in, um, just thinking of the overall impact of of the Shawshank Redemption and and everything that had transpired. You know, following it. You know, the the film gets released, and and uh, you know, uh, there there were things that happened that I want to be able to get into. I want to see if there's any truth to it, actually. Um, but I mean, you have some things with, uh, what do we have, you know, the Shawshank, uh, trail, you know, uh, you know, the, the tourist, you know, um, uh, uh, attraction that, you know, people have, but I guess that there were also some things that had transpired. I don't know if there's any truth to this Mark, but, um, I understand that like not long after the release because of, of people being familiar with your role of Boggs, that there was something that transpired in the elevator. With with someone, um, yeah. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but if you want to elaborate, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, great. it's I'll it's, I'll, re I'll recall that it happened to me numerous times. But uh, my, my youngest daughter was literally. Um, don't tell me it's a daughter. This is after after the release of the movie, but she was just a few months old, and I was taking her to Cedar Sinai just to get a checkup, and my wife was was working, and I'm in the elevator. She's asleep on my shoulder, and just before the doors closed, this woman comes bursting through the door. She kind of looked at me and then she turned away. The doors shut. We're on our way up. 
And then suddenly she turns to me and she goes, oh my God, you're that man and you have a child? And I was like, lady. And my daughter wakes up. She's crying now. And I'm like, lady, I'm an actor for God's sake. I mean, you know, but I, I had that happen so many times. I remember being in, in New Orleans with a buddy's sister and some random person came up and handed me a red balloon and said, here, tie it to your pecker. And I was like, what? Whoa. And I thought, oh, my God, they must have just seen Shawshank. I mean, it's just, oh Jesus. God. Yeah. I, I, I had it in the middle of Costco and, and my daughters were saying, Daddy, why did that? A woman said to me, goes, you're disgusting. And my daughter's like, Daddy, why did they say that? And I said, oh, honey. It's one of Daddy's movies. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Gosh. Uh, yeah. uh, people then, are, people go are ahead. funny. The movie, you know, the movie affected people. That was the that was that was the thing. It was not a this was not a film that you, you know, two days later you can't remember who was in it or what the story was or pe people who People got sucked into this world, and um, I'm I'm amazed. I get approached, you know, I've been approached lots of times by people who say, "I watched this movie with my dad," you know, toward the end of his life, and it it just means something. People 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 make it have made it their own thing. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is, mm. and I they don't hate Haywood because I think he's an idiot, but <laughs> he's and he's and he's funny. He doesn't mean to. I didn't mean to give him the rope. I didn't know he was gonna hang himself. He's not, you know, he's not, he's not evil, the way, you know, uh, Boggs is, but. Um, yeah, I've I've had but, numerous people say to me, "You're the reason I never went to prison." <laughs> <laughs> really? You yeah, yeah. It's like that's it's a, like okay, well, that's well, that's a good thing then that you've wow. got him on the straight and narrow. Um, <laughs> no, people, but people, but people, people love this yeah. film and and continue yeah. and can like generation at generations keep discovering it, which is. Uh, which is really gratifying, because you there. I've done movies that I, you can't watch anymore. They're stuck in a time. They were, you know, very much of that time. Sure. Yeah, it was. You know, it it feels like the early, late eighties, or it, you know, it's yeah. it's the style of the film, or the style, you know, the style of the storytelling is doesn't age well this has no age this film it it just has no age it doesn't happen in it happens in this period of time and in america i guess it's like the green mile in that respect it's a, it, it's not now but it speaks to now you know um well, Bill, let me ask but, this. But, I mean, but it's, it's a kind of a timeless. I think that's part of what makes it timeless. The, the, the themes that you come away with, um, you know, how in hope. Uh, you can't live without hope. This or Andy can't live without hope. Um, you know, I think of Navalny. Um, <laughs> you know that. They could kill the guy. The other, you know, the other, I was thinking about this earlier today. The other movie, the other prison movie that I really admired was Paul Newman in Cool Hand Luke, mm -hmm. where he had this spirit and they couldn't, they, they simply couldn't knock it out of him. They would beat him. They would bury him. They would, you know, it didn't matter what they did to him. There was this, you know, indomitable spirit and uh, and even in death and he be, in, in death he became even more powerful then he was like you know 
it's funny when when Andy escapes and the whole table starts saying telling stories about Andy. Um, uh, it remind anyways. It reminded me of this as a slightly different take on the same theme. Well, Bill, let me ask this: Would you say it also would had it had an impact as well with like to the trajectory? Um, of like your career path as well, because I mean, this was like the first, the uh, the first like Stephen King, you know, adaptation. I understand that you were a part of, and of course, you did two others after that, which I also, you know, enjoy, you know, your roles in as well. Whether it's Green Mile or even like the Mist, I feel like I feel like the Mist is very over, uh, say underrated. So in terms of of that's, you know the the and yeah, huh. in terms of like the ensemble that you have there, like. Just, just like with 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 this film. So, um, would you say that you know that experience of of doing this film, you know, played a role, or would you say it was just happen yeah. chance or serendipitous that you you know ended up doing those two two films? Yeah, well, that I I got to know Frank, and you know, Frank Frank uh, Frank liked what I brought to the role, and we got you know we got along well, and he he sort of had this little rep company that he kept uh that he kept going yeah like a group of actors um, yeah this little group of and and i think a lot lots of directors do this they have people that they love to work with um cinematographers that they work well with they can, composers you know, yeah you know they don't have to worry that this guy doesn't get me right um Oh, they can say two words. They don't even have to say it, and the other and the other person is already thinking it. You know, and I've seen it with Walter Hill does the same thing. He's got you know this this his posse. You know, yeah. when he does when he does a movie, he pulls together his you know his posse, and I think Frank did the same thing. He he loved working with um, he liked working with the same you know some of the same people because uh he could trust them he could they you know they were going to deliver and and he liked you know he enjoyed spending time with them gotcha gotcha I now question. i don't know i don't know i don't i haven't heard from him in a long time so does gotcha. he does he make movies anymore has he made any recently i mean i know he's uh uh he had done uh, the Walking Dead, of course, and uh, you know he had yeah. established that world, and you know that you know Walking Dead just and took then, off and, and then, became its own thing. But but uh, you know they very much I feel owe owe a great deal to Frank for getting that up and running. You know, without what the foundation that he set with that show, we wouldn't be talking about Walking Dead at all. <laughs> Even with all the you know as big as this has gotten and expanded out to so. Um, yeah, I have one more. Thought. I have one more thought about Boggs, that, in a in a funny way, he, without Boggs, there is no, there, he's, he's the he's the problem. He's Andy's, Andy's biggest problem, and it goes on for years, that we get. You know, they say we don't we don't see every incident, but but Morgan's uh, narration Oiso says, you know, he didn't always win. Uh, yeah, it's not a fairy tale, and uh, um, Boggs and the sisters, like uh, it just it was this chapter in the story. That ended with you get <laughs> you getting yanked out of yanked out of that cell by your feet, mm -hmm. um, and and then rolled away. But and we were all glad, and it's great. We were all glad to see that because you was, you know, you had created this problem for a character that we we liked him. We liked Andy already, you mm -hmm. know. Um, absolutely, absolutely. I was going to say, and this is a question to to both of you, actually. Um, you know, in as I said, we're doing thirty years after this film, and and just as an actor in in and of itself, you know, you always love to 
to have, I'm sure, an impact, as you guys have been mentioning with your work. And, you know, any actor coming up would want to have, you know, that same, you know, impact with not just with this film, but I mean, even throughout each of your respective careers, there have been multiple roles that that I'm sure you constantly get, you know, uh, uh, fans, you know, walk up to you for. And sometimes, you know, you have films that are, you know, very financially successful, obviously. And then you have those that, you know, like this film, I feel that it developed, it was, it had critical acclaim, right? But it developed a cult following later down the line, which I feel like it's it more, yeah, yeah. But it, I feel like it found an audience outside of, you know, that that critical, the critical acclaim that it initially received, it found even a, a bigger audience later down the line, which is what you see sometimes with with, with films. So for those, you know, actors that you have out there that are trying to have, you know, those ex those in incredible careers that you guys have, that you guys continue to have, you know, what would be an advice that you would share for either one of you that you would share to them when there is kind of this, these two separate, I feel, um, elements that you have in the industry where, you know, you're trying to, you know, be respected as a as an actor, as a performer, you know, for your work. But at the same time, at the end of the day, it is a business, right? So, like, you know, you still have those elements where you have films that do well right off the off the jump, and and they continue, you know, to have their audience. And then you have those that we have that are like, you know, those cult cult uh, uh, favorites that, you know, it takes time. You have to have patience and have for them to actually find their audience. Mark? Yeah, I mean, I'll answer that quickly. I think for Shawshank, and it's well documented, you know, we did very poor box office, very poor. And it was primarily, I think, because of the title. I mean, a lot of people got confused. They couldn't even pronounce it. And they, you know, once <laughs> guys went to see it and they would say, they'd tell their wife, wow, I saw this amazing film. Right. And the wife says, what is it about? They go, oh, it's this prison movie. Automatically, women just shut down. They're like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care to see that. But um, what saved us was DVD. A, a technology saved us. If it, if it hadn't been for DVD, wouldn't, we wouldn't have done half the business. And there's a great article. This is years ago. My father actually sent it to me. It was in the New York Times. And it was about how uh, Shawshank was often used as a, um, a, a sweetener when they're, say, uh, cable channels were going to distributors and saying, "Hey, look, you know, I I, I want to have, you know, a couple B movies, a couple C movies, you know, for this slate," and uh, they they win them over by saying, "Okay, look, I'll give you those and those, and you know, I'll put on top of it, you can have Shawshank as well, right?" And and then they'd buy up the whole slate of films. So uh, Shawshank has made, and this is an article a long time ago. It's it's billions. It yeah, is made no. billions of yes. dollars. <laughs> yes, is that billions? Is that, is that right? Yep. Yeah. And I was gonna say, has that translated to? I hope that it's translated to residuals, guys, because I know, like, I'm trying to remember. Kind of like an annuity, isn't it, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of like an annuity. This thing keeps you. It's like, I was about to say. I'm sure it you is. got residuals. Well, you know, you you know, Mark. The resid res If it weren't for residuals. I don't know what we would do. This is like constant stream and you get, you know, the one check comes in for like 14 cents and then another check for 1229 and then a check for, you know, 500 bucks. And it, there's no rhyme or reason. I can't figure it out. I'm not, I, I'm not good with money. And so I don't even see these checks, but I see the list and there's Shawshank. Shawshank. You know, yeah. yeah, again and again and again and again. Four times a year, four times a year, we get that check. You know, but, billions but I tell you a funny, I tell you a funny tale. Um, so this was many years ago. I was I was in Italy in Rome making a movie, and we, my wife and I, my we had my baby daughter with us, and we went out to dinner, and we didn't realize there was a a, a, a bus strike. So what, you know, on that evening it was called. So all the cabs were like completely busy and we were like seven miles away from the hotel 
And, you know, after the dinner, I say, hey, can can we get a cab? And, you know, the waiter was like, oh, senora, you know, the, the strike and we th there's no cabs. We can, there's nobody to call. So we literally had to walk home and I'm carrying a baby. And my wife was pissed. So I walked ahead of her um, mainly, <laughs> ma ma mainly to miss her swinging foot. But um, it's at like <laughs> one in the morning and we see I see three ja like leather jacketed kids coming toward me. And I'm thinking, oh, God, man, here I am with my child asleep on my shoulder. I'm going to get rolled. And they fortunately passed by us. And as soon as they got by us, I was still very much aware of their presence. I hear, Signore, Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> and I was like, see, 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 see. <laughs> so one in the morning in Rome, Shawshank saved Boom. my life. Saved your life. <laughs> Boom. The, it's a gift that keeps on giving. It just Dude, does. We, 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 my wife and I were in Barcelona recently, and we walked into this restaurant. And initially, the uh, the um, hostess said, oh, I'm sorry, we, we don't have any tables. And my wife saw a, a poster of Shawshank in Sp <laughs> with Spanish titles. And she goes, but but but, but my husband, is, is he's in that movie. And she made this big stink, and then and then finally, the, the owner. Uh, owner of the restaurant comes out and he looks at me and, and she goes, no, 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 because just Georgina speaks Spanish. She goes, no, he he's in the in this this film, and the guy says, prove it. So I was like, Actually. so I Google, bring up IMDb, and I show him. He goes, oh my God, I'll see you in five minutes. <laughs> that's a, that's so, brilliant. I don't yeah. use it. I don't you. I I don't use it all the time but every once in a while i have to um oh, it really, it's, it's, it's really, it's really, it's really <laughs> help every once in a while it's really helpful to uh <laughs> you know like like when there's like to get a seat in a restaurant or something like that and yeah. and my wife will say go on you go first get your face in there get your face in there <laughs> And I get my face in there. Do the thing. Get my face in there, and the twenty-year-old, you know, hostess doesn't recognize me, and the owner is standing behind her, and he goes, "Die Hard too? Right. Or, or, or whatever, whatever the movie was that he, you know, shush, shush, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Get, get, get this take. Get this table. There's a there's one in the yeah. back, and <laughs> I don't I don't use it all the time, but but it is handy once in a while. And I yeah. and I will confess, every once in a while, I stick my face in because I gotta get I need help, and <laughs> and I and I know you love Shawshank. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, with that being said, you guys have gone through most of it, I feel, so there's no need for me to really put this up, but maybe there is something else that you guys haven't mentioned yet of, you know, in doing these anniversary shows of always talking about, you know, both sides of it, those components that you're most proud of, and then we'll do, you know, uh, uh, the opposite of that afterwards. But maybe there was something that you guys haven't mentioned thus far yet, you know, just overall of what you're most proud of with, you know, uh, uh, being involved, this being a part of this, this particular movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's even well, you know, it, it's it, it's on par with Aliens in terms of for me in terms of an ensemble cast, but um, the sort of depth of storytelling. Uh, is uh, it's hard to surpass Shawshank. I mean, Frank's writing, and of course, you know uh, Stephen King's story. Uh, it's deep, and it it it, it touches. It, it has a, a commonality for for all human beings that you know, uh, you know that 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 hope that we have to have as human beings if we're going to carry on. And um, I really think it's 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 the depth of the project and the writing that makes it so special and uh, it's accessible and and now we're seeing that it's like multi-generational 
you know, pa parents will take their grandson and say, hey, come on and sit down. You have to see my favorite movie, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's 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 a it's an amazing. It's just a classic. It's classic, classic casting. I mean, imagine, you know, the original casting that that Rob Reiner wanted. He wanted Tom Cruise as Andy and he wanted Gene Hackman as Red. Now, I, I get Gene Hackman as Red. Gene Hackman as Red. Would have been. I get it. but what what masterful casting to have Morgan Freeman and the ironic joke when you know Morgan says yeah yeah my name is Red I'm I'm Irish black, black <laughs> Irish that's like, classic it's the best that's what people said when it first came out people said it's a it's a classic I mean when it first came out the first you know and it. I think it ran into theaters for a week or three weeks and then they pulled it from the theaters because nobody came and it, you're right it was the title it was the even if you saw it you the next day you couldn't tell your co-workers yeah it was the sh shrimp tank the sh <laughs> what it was the shum i it means nothing it means it and it sounds redemption so it's religious and it's a prison movie so what the what the fuck is it but but people said it was people were saying once they saw it this is a classic and i thought yeah it's a well well how about if we wait let's wait like 20 years and see if it's a classic because you know yourself there are films that you that are sort of unwatchable now um that were made around the same time you know that it's uh, and and i i knew it was special but i had i didn't you know and now 30 years out it's still impacting people um i mean maybe that's the thing that i'm the most proud of mm. i find I watch Turner Classic Movie Channel, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, I, there's a, there's so many films that I've never seen or that I saw, I saw a long time ago when I didn't really, I don't look at them the same way now. Sure. And, uh, and, and um, there's a we saw I saw we saw Giant the other night, and it has a message about about people with uh, you know the way they treat people who are different and the girl who can't go to the beauty salon because she's hispanic and and dennis hopper marries you know and i can't and i guess like, i just get more proud i guess i'm very proud of this thing that we created back in back in the dark ages um that it's um that it, the message is the message is beautiful the message is meaningful and it's yeah. still meaningful it's yeah. still changing it's still helping people understand themselves and their lives and the, that's why it resonates it because everybody has these issues eventually that about hope about and and uh yeah so i guess that's i guess that's maybe the thing that i'm the most proud of it's gotcha not just a career in the films because they're not all <laughs> they're not they're not all shawshank but but shawshank is shawshank and thank, <laughs> and thank god it is Gotcha. And conversely, you know, I'm sure there's not much with what I'm about to put up now, but maybe, you know, perhaps it was working with, you know, not having the opportunity to work with someone more perhaps, or, or maybe, you know, not sharing, being able to share a scene with a certain person or wanting to do more of something or having a chance to do more of something, um, you know, in, in working on this film, if there was something that you could do differently, being, even if it's being a perfectionist and in, in something that transpired, like what would be something that that you can, you know, picture, you know, for that as a response to that. 
Well, go ahead. Go, Bill. No, go ahead. Go, go. I had a tooth pulled during the filming and they numbed my whole face and I showed up and it was a dinner table scene and Morgan was right across the table from me and <laughs> and he and he was and he kept making fun of me because I was like loopy um, <laughs> which was which was which was great which was you know I appreciated it um I don't think I oh, the only I, I wish when they showed it on TV there's a moment in the when they're throwing the ball back and forth he's when Morgan is throwing the ball he's throwing he's mostly he's throwing it to me and I'm catching it and he says and he says everybody's innocent in here hey Haywood what are you in for and I say didn't do it lawyer fucked me and they and of course they cut that for television but i always thought that was you know i think it's the it's not the first line haywood says but it's a but i but i always liked it <laughs> i didn't i didn't do it lawyer fucked me um <laughs> but you know but you, you'd have to buy the dvd to 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 hear it yeah gotcha so i don't i don't have any regrets about that i mean we're just great yeah i I, you know, I, I don't want to go to too dark a place, but I, I, I have a couple of regrets. I mean, uh, you know, we had a time during the filming when we were a couple of days behind and uh, Castle Rock had come down hard on Frank and he had to cut things out of the movie. And uh, let me not speak about myself first, but the one romantic element to the original script was after Andy comes out of the sewer and it's written. He turns and runs up the hill back toward the prison. And the audience, oh yeah, and the audience would have gone, no, dude, wrong fucking way. Where are you going? And then in the script, there was a vintage, there was a steam locomotive that was going to come right by the prison. And Andy jumped on the train and that's how he got to the next town the next morning so fast and was able to make the deposit in the bank. Oh, wow. Away. Wow. And, and, and they had a real vintage working steam locomotive on the track, ready wow. to go, ready to go. And they, and they had to cut that. They and it was the most they... romantic piece of the whole story. It still works. They can't, but, but they could, they didn't film it then. They didn't. They didn't film cut, it. They said, no, no, cut. no, no, no. He and then for me, for me personally, um, the day that we came to shoot the uh, rape scene in the laundry, yeah, Tim had some serious issues, and he cut. Well, one of my most menacing lines, uh, which is, you know, "That's it. You scream. It's better that way." Because in the original script, we were supposed to have banged his head off the dryer, grabbed him by the hair, stuffed a sock in his mouth, and then a pipe. So all he could do was go, ooh, 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 ooh. he couldn't scream. But Boggs, in, it's the way it's written too, Frank. Boggs whispered that line in his ear. And it's so ironic. He's, you know, he's going, ooh, and he goes, that's it, you scream. It's better that way. It's well, th 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 that line delivered that way would have I, I would have been the villain of all villains <laughs> in movie history, movie history. But you know that that it was a very difficult day to shoot because you know uh, with Tim's issues about whatever his issues were homosexuality whatever it was the dude the dude cost me like five major close ups in that scene. And it was just so selfish of him. And, you know, I would have thought that, because he's a theater guy too, yeah. I would have thought he would have realized that the, the further the hero is humiliated and driven bigger, down and made to suffer the absolute degradation, that when bigger. he finally comes out, the catharsis is that much bigger. Right. And it, the right. film still works. It still works. Don't get me wrong. But had all those things happened and he allowed himself to be degraded. Oh my God. I mean, people did stand up and cheer when he got, came out of the sewer. I mean, I, I was in a theater once where people were like, yo, 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 you know, they were just, 
cheering and hopping out of their seats, but it would have been even greater. So those couple little things, but you know, um, that's interesting. I didn't know. I didn't realize. That. Oh yeah. It was a heck of a day. Well, there were things that day. I was fishing that day. I'm sure I was like, <laughs> I did a lot of fishing in those lakes, in those lakes in Ohio. In Ohio. Yeah. Oh, wow. I guess so. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're filming. Um, <laughs> That's like, great. I and I, I remember my agent came to town, and this is nothing, you know. I don't mean to denigrate Mansfield, but at the time, um, the best, one of the best, maybe the best restaurant in town was the Olive Garden, and and my agent came to town and said, I want to take you guys out. And what's the best restaurant in town? And I said, the Olive Garden. And he said, yeah, yeah, come on, come on. What's what, What's the best restaurant in town? And I said, no, the it's, Olive Garden. The, it's the Olive Garden. And, and we, it was, was Mansfield was fall, had fallen on hard times at the, at the moment. Yeah. But <laughs> as we pulled up, uh, uh, Tim Robbins and um, um, oh, Tim Robbins came walking out the front door, and we went in. And there's Morgan over in the corner with Alfonso, and he said, "You were Jesus, you, you're not kidding. This is like, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Well, the other thing." The other thing that was fun was, I was that fun? There, there was a, the place has a vibe. The, you, all you had to do was sit in those cells. I don't know if you did this, Mark, but the, one of the first things I did during those rehearsal weeks, one of the things I did was go up and sit in the actual cell. You don't even have to close, you don't close the door, but just, just sit there, sit on that bunk, sit in this tiny, tiny room and it's double decker bunks, it's bunk beds. So, so if one of you wants to pace, the other guy's got to lay in his bed. Um, and in about 20 minutes, I understood more about that world. I mean, it's, there's so much pain. And so many ruined lives, just the sadness and the, and outside the prison, I don't know if you know, saw this, but there were these little tiny red headstones and they had numbers on them. And what they were, it was all overgrown because um, the, there's nobody mowing the lawns. And each headstone was an inmate who died there, who that nobody came to claim the body. Hmm. They just died, you know, the family's gone and whatever, and they don't know what to do with the body. So they plant them out, out by the wall, out by the corner of the wall. There are all of these little tiny red headstones and all they put on it was the number. And I thought, after, you know, however many years you you kept him in here, you couldn't give him his name back. You couldn't say Ralph, you know, Johnson or, or the dates or anything. You just, it's just the numbers. And, and I, was, I was kind of blown away by it. And I mentioned it to Frank. And I think he, I think that's the reason that the one after Andy leaves, you see, you see them cleaning up around all of these little headstones. Those are real headstones. Those are the real inmates who, uh, nobody bothered to come and get the body. Yeah. Wow. You know? Yeah. It was a place, the place had a, the place was oppressive. Mm. Well, I mean, on that note, guys, uh, I wanted to, of course, <laughs> of course, thank you guys so much. Uh, I don't want to take too much more of your time. I appreciate you guys uh, coming. 
uh, coming on on a Sunday, on your Sunday. I'm sure you guys are in the middle of other things, but I really do appreciate you guys uh, hopping on. Uh, before I let you go, um, for each of you, can you tell folks where they can find you? Whoever like to go first. Oh, uh, you can find me in Los Angeles if you can find me in Los Angeles. But no, you mean <laughs> you mean on uh, where I got Social, on... socials. Oh yeah, I mean um, Instagram. It's Mark Rolston official, and I I killed and then my maybe upcoming events. Maybe I killed my ex account, and yeah, uh, upcoming events. See me on Bosch Legacy. Uh, it's a great Amazon series, and yeah, um, yeah and my uh, forays into uh, the gaming world. Uh, Spider-Man Three will be filmed later this year, I'm told, and Indeed. and I've got a huge virtual reality title which I can't divulge, but this October, watch out, virtual reality game. Oh my God, it's insane! It's wow. insane. The technology. Is raising ahead, there. people. It's there. Is there a, know, is there a title? Is it Spider Man? Is it? No, 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 no. The virtual reality, I can't tell you, but it, it's 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 going to be amazing. The basic thing that's going to be revolutionary is is that you, as the owner or player, become the lead. You're the you're the you're the lead character. Oh, whoa. it's it's like the ultimate. Like the, the reason we go to the movies is to identify and and you know and share Harry, that experience oh, and compare thanks, to ours Mark. thanks Mark. this one will never work again <laughs> if everybody if everybody can star in their own movie <laughs> right that's what i'm saying no, it's like we don't, we don't need sadler what the fuck <laughs> we need sadler we need sad wild I, you can reach i'm still on x although i don't know why i almost never post there but it's wm underscore Sadler and um, and if you go to the real William Sadler dot com there's an album that of songs that I put together during the pandemic when I finally had some time and then during the strike I finished it up um, and it's called the kitchen tapes because we glued them together <laughs> we <laughs> They're all home. They're homemade. They're my songs. They're my voice. They're my friends who play on it. And I finally, I, I thought, if I don't do this, you know, someday in a yard sale, there'll be a box of, C of cassettes with the names written on them. And that'll be the end. And that'll be the end of it. But now there's an album called The Kitchen Tapes that you can go to the real William Sadler and um, and it's a real and it's a real album. It's a real it's a Very real cool. thing. So Very and, cool. and the money goes to St. Jude's. So if it looks expensive, uh, it's it's for a good cause. And That's you'll cool. and you'll enjoy the songs, I hope. And if not, they make great coasters. The CD. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Great. awesome. Uh, well, again, I want to thank Mark and uh, Bill for hopping on, talking about the 30th anniversary. This is so cool to have you guys on, um, talking 30th anniversary of Shawshank Redemption. I'm your host, uh, Brandon Choi. You can find me at Brandon Choi uh, ENT on X and then Brandon Choi underscore ENT on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be safe out there. and.